What's going on producers? In this video, I am going to show you the best way to monetize your music in 2023 and beyond. And the reason I say this is the best way is because this has been working for years. This is working right now, and this is going to continue to work. It's not a fad, it's not a trend, and it's not gonna die out. This is tried and true, this is proven, and I wanna show you exactly how to capitalize on this so you can take the music that's in your hard drive right now, get it out into the world, have it be placed, and get paid from those placements every single day. Quarter. If you don't know me or you're new to my channel, my name is Bruce Beats. I'm a music producer, multi-instrumentalist with credits across Netflix, ESPN, Hulu, McDonald's. My music has been featured on mainstream industry artists such as Russ, Rhapsody, producers like Major 7, and I mentor producers on how to create Radio Ready Records, industry standard tracks, and monetize those records via sync licensing. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about right here in this video. So let's hop right in. This is the best way for you to monetize your music in 2023. I've broken this down into three parts and I want to mention that you will not be able to pay the bills long term with music if all of these parts are not dialed in. I can't stress this enough. Okay. So we're going to go over the three parts and we're going to dive into them in detail. Okay. Part one, the music itself. And this is the most important part. And this is the step that most people overlook. I'm not exactly sure why, but but this is the most important part, okay? Part two is how to build quality connections. And part three is how to create consistent passive income from royalties. And the reason I have the word passive in italics and parentheses is because passive income, while it is passive, you have to do some initial work to create the passive income. But once you let that happen, it truly is passive. And before we dive deep, I want to show you exactly what I mean by that by introducing you to the snowball effect. When you're at the top of Mount Everest and you throw down a rock or you, you, you make a snowball and you throw it down, it's just a snowball at first. But as it starts working its way down the mountain, it starts to become bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the time it gets at the bottom, it's an avalanche. If you stop this momentum at any part of the process, you will not let the snowball become as big as it can become. And the only way it's going to become this big is by letting it continue to go down the mountain without interrupting its momentum. So in order for this to really pay off for you, you have to commit to letting the snowball effect take place in your life. This can also be thought of as the compound effect. Now this is a graph where they have skill and time and then 1% changes over time dramatically start to add up to hockey stick like growth. But we can think about this as placements and time or we can think about this as placements and royalties because when you start getting a fir your first few placements and you get three placements don't expect to quit your job after your first three placements okay but when you start letting the placements rack up again and again and tv producers and tv shows start using your tracks over and over again and then your tracks go into or in those, those episodes go into syndication which means that they go into rerun and then your tracks are just played again and again and again all the time and you just keep getting paid from that track you made five years ago, along with the new ones that you're making, that's when the placements start to rack up over time and your royalties start looking bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. And this is not theory. This is exactly how it works. It's been true for my life. It's been true in my colleagues' lives and it's becoming true in my students' lives as well. So I'm very, very excited to show you this information, but I want to make sure that I'm setting the right expectations for you so you know what to expect once you're getting into this. Okay. Absolutely, we want these quick wins. We want to get in the room, but we want to be able to stay in the room as well so we can do this long term. And we don't just have some quick wins, fizzle out, and we still have to keep working at our day job. So let's get right into it. Part one, the music itself. This is the most important piece. I cannot stress this enough because if you don't have a good product, nobody is going to buy. If McDonald's fries weren't the bomb, people wouldn't be lining up at that drive-through. You have to be dope at creating music. Your skill set has to be top-notch. And by dope, I mean you have to be making industry standard quality productions. You have to be able to produce radio-ready records. Your idea development, your song structure, the arrangement of your tracks, the sound selection, the mixes, the masters, all of this has to be on point. It has to be top-notch quality. And it has to be major label release quality. If it's not, you're gonna have a hard time 
getting in the door, okay? So that is why this is the most important thing. And so the skills to cultivate to make this happen are number one, creating a specific brand of music very well. If you're trying to create film scores and you're trying to create hip hop and R&B and you're trying to make Afro house and you're trying to make pop and you're trying to make, th these are all different sub languages of the language of music, right? They're all like different dialects of the overarching language of music. It's very hard to speak all those very authentically and well without an accent. But if you just focused on, I'm gonna make hip hop and R&B and I'm gonna make that junk dope. I'm gonna be so authentic at this. I'm gonna make Afro house and I'm gonna make it better than anybody else. I'm gonna make jazz and I'm gonna make it better than anybody else. Now you have something to work with and now you have something you could present. And you know it's going to land because it's going to be authentic, it's going to be great, it's not gonna be half Number two, dial in your workflow so you can create this music fast because we'll get to this in a, in a little bit, but sometimes there are some tight turnarounds in this industry. And if you can't make music fast, if it's taking you a week, if it's taking you two weeks, if it's taking you four days to make an entire piece of music, you may need to speed that up a little bit, okay? And I can show you how. It's a little bit beyond the realm of this video, but these are the skills that we wanna be able to cultivate so we can make music fast and we can make it at an industry standard quality. And honestly, that's it. Those are the only two skills that we need to succeed in this game, I guarantee you, and you're gonna see why in just a second. But I need to say, the only way the next steps will work is if you're actually bringing high level value to your collaborators, your partnerships, your audience, etc. You don't wanna work with people who have average level skills, right? If somebody hits you up and they sound kinda okay, you're not gonna wanna work with that person. So why would people wanna work with you if you fall into that category? Right? So the goal is to reach a level where you're objectively dope. In music, there's always a subjective measure, but you wanna to get to the point where it's like, yeah, this guy knows his stuff. As soon as I hit play, it sounds quality, it sounds radio ready. Like maybe I can nitpick at a couple things. Maybe it's not my taste. Maybe it's not my flavor, not my favorite style, but I can't say it's bad because by all objective measures, the mix is popping, the master's popping, beautiful melodies, beautiful chord progressions, great arrangement from beginning to end. It's a really great track. That's the point where we wanna to get to, okay? And you'll never stop improving, right? Because music is a lifelong craft. There's always something to learn. There's always areas of improvement in everybody's skill set no matter how good you are and the greatest musicians will always say that and if somebody's not saying that they're probably not a true blue musician but when you're objectively good at what you do everything else falls into place much easier contacts are much easier to get connections are much easier to get things just start showing up to you like it's magic i'm sure you've heard the saying take care of the music and the music will take care of you i think that's not 100 percent true but i think there is a lot of truth in that sentiment because i found that to be true in my life just by highlighting certain things that I'm good at, things start coming my way that I would have never imagined and I'm not even really seeking them out. I'm just highlighting what I know how to do well and I want the same for you. So make sure you're dope, okay? That's part one. Part two, how to build quality connections. This part is so important too. This is very integral to making everything else work. We want the right connections. It's much like if I make hip hop and R&B, which I do, and I go to somebody who's getting country and rock placements. It's not gonna be a very good partnership, right? Or let's say, you know, I'm a rapper and trumpet player, which I am, I don't rap that much these days, but I do sometimes. And then I show up to a party and they're all like heavy metaled out. That's not really a great place for me to be, right? And a great place for me to do my thing. It's not really gonna be appreciated there. So it's the same thing when we're trying to build these quality connections. We wanna find people who are getting placements in the realm of the music that we like to make. And then we have a beautiful synergistic partnership royalties or I'm sorry placements and royalties start to explode from there so the key to building connections is to pitch your music effectively and wow the supervisor agent or company you are submitting to and the way you do that is by having a hook and a solid presentation you have a hook you have a solid presentation boom you're in the door your hook is the music that you specialize in 
and your specialty is the music that you make better, faster, and more authentically than any other style. So much like we were saying before, you know, you have these different dialects within the language of music, these different genres, but there are certain genres and there are certain styles that you make way more authentically than other styles and that you make faster. And so that's how we want to get in the door by honing in on your specialty and making sure that it is objectively dope, using that as the attention grabber to the person that you're trying to create a partnership with. And we want to highlight that when pitching our music. So you want to say, hey, so-and-so, my name is Bruce. I'm a music producer from Miami, Florida, and I specialize in Latin hip hop. That sounds really cool. It's like Latin hip hop is a very specific thing. There's nothing worse than getting an email that's saying, hey man, my name is Bruce and I make everything dope AF. Let's work. <laughs> How many DMs have you gotten to say, let's work, let's collab? Do you really take that person seriously? Not really, right? And the reason is because professionalism speaks volumes. This happens everywhere, and especially in this industry, professionalism speaks volumes. I'm sorry to say it, there are way too many producers and musicians who are not professional. So if you just show up professional, with your dotted I's and your cross T's and your tie is nice, you're halfway in. They already love you before you before they even listen to your music. So once you've caught their attention with that nice opener, link them to your music and make sure it's licensable. Super important. Loopy tracks, long drawn out intros, fade out endings, that's not gonna work, okay? I'll be honest with you. You need an attention grabbing intro, you need a memorable hook, you need a professional arrangement, you need professional idea development, you need a button ending, you need it to, you need it to be mixed and mastered, clean, loud, punching, popping out of the speakers, and a knock your socks off demo, a solid presentation. That's what gets you in the door, that's what gets you on their team, and that's what gets you consistent briefs, which gets you paid. This is a very, very important step. We want to nail every single part of this so we can be on the team. They can send us briefs. We're not chasing placements anymore. The placements are coming to us. The opportunities are coming to us. We submit our music. Voila. Magic. It's just like that. Okay. Now, part three, creating consistent passive income. Okay. Passive right? Because we got to do it first and then it will continue to pay us, okay? But there is work involved up front. Now, assuming that you have done everything right so far, this part honestly is the easier part because this is the part where we just do the thing we love. And ironically, this is the same part where most people fall off. I, I mean, I have a million theories as to why, but that's beyond the scope of this video. What we've done up to this point is make sure we get in the door, okay? We make sure we impress them, we make sure we make a good impression, and that way we get in the door. And when everything that we've talked about so far is done well enough, we make it on the team and onto the inner circle of producers for sync opportunities. And now, we simply play the game. As simple as that. Briefs roll in your inbox, you make music, you get placements. More briefs roll in, you make more music, you get more placements. I know that sounds super simple, but it really it is not more complicated than that. Now, sometimes these come with upfront sync fees for bigger opportunities. Some libraries, production houses, agents, they'll give you a small fee upfront for every time you submit a track, maybe $100, maybe $200. For bigger commercials and things like that, maybe they have a bigger budget, $2,000 to $5,000. For the one track, maybe even $10,000. I've seen some really, really nice ones for 20, even 40K. And those are for some really, really big opportunities. So even if you're working with another artist, and it's a 50k opportunity and it was two of you on the record and you had to split it and even if you were splitting it with the library 50k and three it's not a bad deal <laughs> okay but those aren't as common but they do exist and that's why this industry is so awesome and sometimes they don't come up with anything up front and that's cool you know why because they all come with back-end royalties. Every single placement you will ever get from here to the rest of your life will come with back-end royalties. And every single time that episode and your music airs, you get paid. It's awesome. That is why those who are patient and let the snowball effect happen, win. And those who get discouraged and bow out before that happens, lose. And that's a good thing too. You know why? Because that means more briefs are coming your way, more placements 
you're racking up and more money is deposited into your bank account come royalty day. This has not only been true for me and my colleagues, it's become true for my producer mentees as well. And many times these briefs will have tight turnarounds. I've seen things honestly within 24 hours before, 48 hours, 72 hours, maybe you know an entire week and it's like hey give me as much as you can for this opportunity in one week. It really just depends on the opportunity but sometimes they can be pretty tight. Sometimes they can be 48 hours, 24 hours. So this means you have to have the ability to make high quality music fast to meet the demand. That is why part one is the most important thing because let's say we kind of just skip over part one a little bit and we just go right to part two and we just st start to build these quality connections. And let's say we do this very, very well, right? Let's say we get our hook. Let's say we get our solid presentation. Let's say we get in the door. They get us on the team. Woo, woo, I'm on the team, but now I have these turnarounds that I can't make. And when I submit tracks, they're subpar. They're not very quality. The music supervisor I've made a connection with who was very excited about me because of my pitch is now kind of seeing, well, this guy isn't as professional as I thought, or this gal. Uh, this, this music I'm getting, it's not, it's not as good as the first tracks I heard from them. I don't know if I want to keep sending them briefs. And then you, you start to lose that opportunity. You start to lose that connection. You start to kind of burn that bridge a little bit because you didn't necessarily have the skills to keep up. And at the end of the day, we want skills in the first place, right? We didn't come into music to make money. I mean, who comes into music to make money? We do music and we choose music or music chooses us because we love it. We love making music and we want to express ourselves in the best way that we can. Skill cultivation, that's the way you do it. And so developing these skills is not only going to just fulfill you as a person and as a human and as a musician and as a producer, being able to express your ideas in the exact way you want them to, having your chords be awesome, having your melodies be awesome, your arrangements be banging, your mixes, your masters cleared, all industry standard quality objectively dope, but now it's also paying you. So you're not just good at what you do, you are a professional who is actually getting money for the skills that you have cultivated. That is what's beautiful about this industry. You can do that. And there's no, there's very little chance involved in this because this process is proven. It works. I see it work in front of me all day long from the producers that I mentor. So we need to be dope so that we can keep winning long term and we don't burn the bridges that we create. So to recap, there are three parts to this monetization process, okay? And you will not be able to pay the bills long-term if everything is not dialed in, all right? Part one, music itself. Part two, how to build quality connections. And part three, creating consistent passive income. I cannot stress enough that this framework works like math. And just like math, you cannot multiply and divide if you can't add and subtract. Part three will not work without part two, and nothing will work without part two. One. So make sure your music is objectively dope. Take time to understand what your hook is. Commit to letting the snowball effect kick in. So that way you can wake up every day and make music knowing your bills are taken care of. And if you need help with any part of this process, making your music objectively dope from the creation side, like the chords and the melodies and the song structure and the arrangement, or from the more production side, right? To the sound selection, to the mixes, to the masters, to the EQs, delays, to the plugins, all of that type of stuff. Or maybe it's more of the business end, how to find your hook, how to put together your solid presentation, how to present yourself, who to actually pitch your music to, what is going to be the right connection for the music you make. And then once you're in the door, how to navigate that landscape when they're sending you briefs, what do these contracts mean? If you need any help in this part of the process, I got your back. Number one, that's why I created this channel, so I can help you out. And number two, that's why I, I mentor producers. I love teaching, I love educating, I love helping. And so if you want help in this process, there's a bunch of free materials down here. I have an entire free training that goes way more in depth into this process. And I have some free guides that you can check out as well. So go ahead and check out the description if you would like some more help making this happen for yourself. And listen, trust the process, you got this. Okay, I believe in you. Let's get to work. My name is Bruce Beats. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.